I'm going to show you how to log into the VRO client. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. In previous videos, I've told you that Orchestrator comes in two forms. There's the standalone Orchestrator server and the embedded Orchestrator server. The way you log into them is a little bit different. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to log in to both. Let's do so in the lab environment. First, let's see how to log into VRO if you're using the standalone VRO server. If you're using the standalone VR server, you are going to log in by opening up a web browser and going to https colon slash slash followed by the FQDN of your orchestrator server. I'll hit enter and I'm taken to this lovely screen where in previous videos I've talked about control center. I notice there's also some other great resources down here, but in order to get logged in, you're going to click on the link that says start the orchestrator client. So I'll click that link. And as you can see, because I'm using vSphere SSO as the authentication mechanism, I'm redirected here to a screen uh, that says vSphere, but I'm still actually logging into the VRO client. If you're using some other authentication mechanism, you wouldn't expect to see vSphere, but uh, something else appropriate to your authentication mechanism. I'm going to log in, as I did in a previous video, as administrator at vSphere.local, typing my super secret password. I'll click login. And as you can see, I'm now logged into the VRO client, specifically logged into a standalone orchestrator server. So that's simple. What about logging into the embedded orchestrator server? Again, whenever I say embedded orchestrator server, what I'm talking about is in VRI's Automation 8, we have embedded into the VRA appliance an orchestrator server. That embedded orchestrator server has the same functionality as the standalone orchestrator server and vice versa. In order to log into VRO, specifically the embedded VRO server, I'm going to type a slightly different URL. Now let me pull up my URL. And as you can see here, uh, once again, I'm going to HTTPS colon slash slash. But now the FQDN is for my orchestrator, excuse me, my VRI's automation appliance but otherwise the URL looks the same. So I'll go ahead and hit enter here and it takes me to the login splash screen. I actually have to click on go to login page. So it's one extra step, but no big deal. And um, I am being authenticated now using whatever authentication mechanism the VRI's automation administrator has specified. In this case here, we're using something known as VMware Identity Manager, also known as Workspace ONE Access. In order to log into VRO and VRA in general, I need to type a username and a password, but also notice I have to make certain that I'm logging into the right domain. So before I type the username and password, I'm going to look at the domain here and check, is this the right one? If I'm logging into administrator vSphere.local, then I'm good to go here. On the other hand, if I were logging into a different domain, um, example.com, or if I'm logging into what's known as the sample domain, excuse me, the system domain, I need to click on change to a different domain, then pick whatever domain I want to log into. The Typically, the, the one and only account in system domain is an account called config admin, excuse me, config admin. So if you need to log in as config admin and you know what that account is and you have the credentials, you would need to switch to system domain. But the account I want to log in as is in the domain called vclass.local. So I'll choose vclass.local, which was the default already. And back on this earlier screen, I'm going to log in as eng-ca-admin. So that's an account that's actually defined in this case is an account that's defined over in our Active Directory services. So vidm workspace one is acting as a front end to Active Directory. So this account here is defined over in Active Directory but it has my usual super secret password. If I click sign in, then it goes through the little splash screen here. And when you first log into VRI's Automation 8, what you're going to see is a screen that lets you know what 
services you have been authorized to to access. The VRA administrator can go into the identity and access management tab to control what you have access to. Uh, I happen to be logged into an account that is an administrator, but if I want to, I could change a user's access by going here and I can individually say whether I want them to be able to see Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, CodeStream, or we're most interested now in Orchestrator. Now, we can talk in later videos about what C C Cloud Assembly, CodeStream, and Service Broker are, but we're here to talk about Orchestrator today. So I'm going to click on Orchestrator, and when I do so, you'll notice that I'm logging into the very same VRO client. And I'm just going to flip-flop between these two tabs. On this tab here, I'm logged into the VRO client as, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm logged into the VRO client into a standalone orchestrator server. And in this tab, I'm logged into the VRO client logging into the v, the embedded orchestrator server, the one that's embedded to VRA. So it's the same client, does the same things. And either way, you're logged in and you're ready to go. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to run a VRO workflow.